Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I uploaded, but today's video is very, very exciting because I am going to be trying out some brand new brushes. My friend Angie launched a brand new brand, her own brushes. These released on Saturday, March 25th. I will have a link down below if you are interested in purchasing them, but I was able to make my purchase early because I am friends with Angie. She let a select few of us go ahead and check out the website ahead of time, order if we wanted to. I did. I got my hands on these five brushes. So I'm going to tell you about these brushes today and I'm going to go ahead and use them in like a little get ready with me tutorial and see what these brushes are all about. But if you are new here, hello and welcome. My name is Kelly and I love all things makeup and beauty. I love talking. I love makeup. I love talking about makeup. So if you'd like to chat about makeup too, I would love to have you subscribe and be part of the K-Bella fam. Why don't we go ahead and jump into the video? So now that we are up close and personal, I'm going to get started priming my eyes. I'm going to use this Sigma eyeshadow base primer. It's in the shade Ignite. But I'm very excited because my friend Angie launched her own brand, Singe Beauty, and I will have Angie's channel and video listed down below. I know she's been working on this for so long because we are friends. I was able to get some behind the scenes like sneak peeks and info about it. Angie was just here for the Houston rodeo and for a visit with her family and with Heather Austin and her family, and we got to talk about about this new brand and the brushes that Angie was launching. And like I mentioned, she did reach out to some of her friends and let us take a peek at the website and make a purchase. I did purchase these brushes myself, but of course, I wanna support my friend. You know, like anytime I have a friend who is starting a new venture, whether it's a collab or their own business or whatnot, I always wanna be supportive, you know? I love to see my friends doing great things. And so when Angie told me about this, I was super excited. The fact that she was like, do you want a sneak peek? Do you want to see the brushes? Do you want to see the website? I was like, yes, girl, put me on. So we're going to try these out today. I'm going to tell you about each of the brushes. I am going to go in. I always set my eyeshadow primer. I know not everybody does, but I always do. So I am going to take just tempura from the ABH Soft Glam Palette, but then I think we're going to use a Sigma palette today. Not a new palette, but one that I have not had the pleasure of using yet. And we're just going to create a look using, using these brushes, testing them out. I want to tell you about them. I'm excited to use them. I love a good makeup brush. I've tried so many throughout the years. I definitely have some favorites. I have some go-tos and I'm excited to see what Angie's been working on and to see if these are going to be some of my new favorite brushes. Okay, so I'm going to be using the Sigma Warm Neutrals. This is the little seven pan eyeshadow palette. I have not used this one yet. Been wanting to try it out, been wanting to use it. Let me see, I'm trying to come up with a game plan here. I think the first brush that I'm gonna go in with is this one right here. It is the E03, and I'm looking at Angie's little insert here. It says this is a bigger, slightly tapered, fluffy crease brush to blend out edges or apply matte shadows seamlessly all over the crease. The perfect brush for a lighter transition color. Now I do wanna say, the way that Angie does her makeup, she applies her deeper mattes first, and then she would go in with the E03 to blend through the crease, but I kind of do reverse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this middle shade right here in Toasty and I am going to dip this E03 in and we are going to apply this through the crease. Now I do have small eyes and they're hooded so I'm excited to see what these brushes can do because sometimes it can be tricky with small eyes, with hooded eyes, just to make these shadows work for me. You know, I don't have a lot of lid space. I don't have a lot of real estate. Right off the bat, this is blending nicely. This brush is a little bit smaller than some of the other brushes that I do use for my crease work, for my transition. And that's actually a good thing because like I said, small hooded eyes, I don't have a lot of space. So this is nice and fluffy and it's definitely blending very seamlessly, but like if I compare it to my 
Sigma E40. You can see here the Sigma E40 is quite a bit bigger and fluffier, so sometimes it gets shadow like everywhere. Whereas this EO3, if you do have small eyes or hooded eyes or you need something that's a little bit more precise, I can see that this is going to be a good brush for that. So the next brush I'm going to use is the EO2, and this one, it says, is a medium fluffy brush to blend and pack color into the crease. The tapered bristles help with the cre with creating definition while still making blending easy. So if we are comparing the two, you can see this is the EO3, this is the EO2. The EO2 is smaller and more tapered, but still fluffy. So this one, I'm gonna use with my deeper color. This one right here, it is in the shade Henna, and I'm gonna dip that in, and this one is going to go more in the crease. And right off the bat, I can tell you that a lot of times with my crease shadow brushes, I have a hard time just because I have small hooded eyes, I have a hard time with brushes being too big and this one is not going to cause that problem for me. That's why if you're familiar with my channel, I really love the BK Beauty 202 this one right here and the reason why I love the BK Beauty 202 is because it is smaller and more tapered it's still bigger than the Singe Beauty brush but it's smaller and more tapered so that I can get right into the crease and you can see here this EO2 brush it really packed on my crease color it still is fluffy enough where I can blend those edges but I don't have to worry about that deeper shade getting up too high on the lid, which is amazing. Going back in with the original shade, the original brush, the EO3, and I'm just gonna take a little bit more and diffuse that crease. Now one thing going between the EO2 and the EO3, one of the differences I can tell besides the shape is that the EO3 is a little bit fluffier. So the EO2 is still fluffy, but it's a little bit more densely packed in my opinion, and it really gets the color on there nicely. And the EO3 is just a tiny bit fluffier to really do the blending and the edge work. Then we have the EO5. The EO5 is a small detailed fluffy brush with two with precision add colors to the crease or outer corner all this without losing intensity so this one is tinier still a bit fluffy but even in comparison to the eo2 that we just used a little bit smaller a little bit more um, less tapered more of like a domed tip on the top and this one we're going to use in the outer corner i do want to take just a touch of this shade right here in rogue which is a little bit of a red shade and my plan is to put this in the inner corner now normally when i'm doing inner corner shades i do go in with something that is a little bit more domed or more dense this is fluffy so this is going to do a nice job of blending if you have a shade like this shadow here i'm getting plenty of pigmentation from it so it's not an issue at all but if you have a shade that you know is a little bit lighter and you really want to pack on the color because this is fluffier i feel like it's better for like blending and you may still want something that's a little bit more domed but this is doing a great job at getting that rogue shade just right out there in the inner corner but also blending it out now it doesn't say this on here but i feel like this could be like this is like a detailed brush you could use this for the lower lash line we're going to use a different brush in a minute but you could totally just take this and use it in the lower lash line or you know, for those of us with small hooded eyes, I could even use this in the crease if I was trying to do maybe more of a cut crease or just some very precise blending. These small brushes, I definitely feel like they're lacking in, in the makeup industry in the market. It's hard for us tiny eyed people to really find these brushes that help us with detail work. And so I'm really excited to have this in my collection now. Now I'm going in with the EO4. Now the EO4, this honestly, if I didn't have Angie's like little card here with me, I would probably use this on my lid because it is small and fluffy, but it is more like 
almost packed this way and fluffier. It reminds me of my BK Beauty 203, but it says that this is the perfect brush to blend edges or ap apply color with precision to the crease. Also a great brush to smoke out your lower lash line. So we're gonna do lower lash line work with this. And I think what I'm gonna do is maybe go back and forth between these two brown shades in the crease because henna might be a tap too dark and Toasty might be a tap too light. And I put it on the edge there let me tap it off a little bit because these shadows have been very pigmented. Normally I go in with a pencil brush. This is a little bit fluffier of a brush than I typically use. I just dipped more into that henna shade. But as you can see, it's, it's doing a nice job of really blending and smoking out that lower lash line. If you're looking for something more precise on the lower lash line, this isn't going to be the one in my opinion, but if you're looking to really smoke out that lower lash line, which I typically do, it hides some of those fine lines and wrinkles there, this is a great one for that. I don't know that I would have thought to use this in my crease. Now I'm no expert by any means, but I don't think that's what I would have thought for this one, but you can see it did a nice job there of like creating a smoky effect. This is a side note, but do you guys have an eye that you have an easier time like applying makeup to? I'm right-handed, but for some reason doing my left eye, doing my left brow, like my left side is my good side, I guess. So I saved the EO one for last. I believe Angie said this was the first brush that she worked on. This is a flat tapered brush. It is the perfect brush to pack on color, mattes or shimmers. The bristles are cut to easily pick up product and the pointed tip helps with precision. Now I always use Fix Plus and I forgot mine so I'll be right back. I always use Fix Plus when applying shimmers but this one, it's similar to the one that we just used, the EO4, where they are both kind of on that like thin but fluffy side, but the EO1 is a little bit more tapered. So we're gonna take this and we are going to use this shade right here. It is in the shade Beaming. We're gonna use this on the lid. I'm gonna dip my brush in there. It picks up the shadow nicely. I'm gonna spritz it with Fix Plus. Just a light little spritzeroo, and we're gonna put this on the lid again. This is a great brush for those of us with smaller eyes because it's not so large. That's one thing, I know I've said this multiple times, but that's one thing I struggle with as someone with smaller eyes. A lot of the brushes that I tried in the past were just a little bit too big for the real estate that I have on my eyes. And that's why I really loved my BK Beauty brushes. But you can see here, so the nice thing about this is it's not too big, right? Like it can pack on the shadow, but because it's tapered, I can also like blend it in with the crease seamlessly. It did an amazing job. Just to show you what I'm doing on the inner corner and then we'll finish up and talk about the brushes because that's what the bulk of this video is about. But I'm going to take this shade right here in Charmer and my pinky. This is more of a satin. And we're going to pop this right on the inner corner. I also think if you wanted to do like a little bit of a, of a halo eye, it would be pretty to put this on the middle of the eye look that I have right now for this video. We're going to pop it on the inner corner. I'm going to go ahead and put some mascara on and I'll be back to share my thoughts on these brushes. Okay, so this is the finished look here. If you're interested on what is on my lips, I do have the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Lip Crayon in Natasha as my lip liner. And I finally got around to using my girl, Barbara. I'm pretty sure I bought Barbara during the Sephora VIB sale in November maybe? And this is my first time using it today, which that is why I have myself on a no buy for lip products this year, because as you can see, it is now the end of March and I'm just now getting a chance to reach for Barbara. But I did want to share my thoughts on these Singe Beauty brushes. First of all, 
The packaging is so Angie. Like, I know she loves orange. I think these are beautiful. They're different. They will stand out in my collection. You know, I love when you look at my brushes, you see all of these different colors, so these are gonna add a nice pop to it. I love the black ferrule. I don't mind the brown bristles. I think it's nice, because you can see here I have a mixture of like white and black, and I mean, I'm not someone who's picky on that anyway. I don't care if you can see like eyeshadow or whatnot, but I'm not really worried about this staining, whereas some of my white brushes or bristles, they do end up getting stained. But here's the thing, here's the thing about these brushes, and this is what makes them different and unique in my collection. Let me just pull out, I'm gonna pull from different brands, I'm gonna pull like all kinds of, of eye brushes here. Most of my brushes, I have to say, are Sigma and BK Beauty, but when you're looking, I even have a Lunar Beauty one here, when you're looking at my brushes, you can see a lot of them are big and fluffy and large, and I said I have small eyes. My eyes are tiny, they're small, they're hooded, I don't have a lot of real estate. So the thing that makes these Singe Beauty brushes different is that they're not as large. They're not as fluffy. They're going to be better for someone like me who has small eyes. They're going to be better for detail work if you're really trying to accentuate different colors or using multiple colors. Oh, we almost lost one there. If you're looking for brushes that are a bit smaller and you're able to get a more precise look, I think these are going to be great for that. That's why they're gonna be great in my collection. I don't have a ton of brushes that really cater to my smaller eyes or to detail work, and so these are going to be amazing in my collection for that reason alone. So. I believe these are $55 if I'm remembering correctly on the Singe Beauty site. I will have them linked down below. I also think that is a great price point because typically when I'm thinking about eye bundles where you can get five brushes to create a complete look here, I want to say a lot of them are around like $80 or $90, $60, $70, $80, $90. These are $55. So I love it. I love that it is an indie brand. I love that I am supporting my friend. And I'm just really proud of Angie. I'm proud of her. Of course, I'm a little bit biased, but I definitely see Angie all over these brushes. I see her in the handle. I see her in the design. I see her in, you know, the way that the brushes work and everything. She is, in my opinion, the indie eyeshadow queen. So I love the fact that she came out with eye brushes and that she is an indie brand. So huge congratulations to Angie. I am so proud of her. I loved the brushes. I'm so thankful that I got my hands on them and I'm definitely going to be using them some more in the future. But that is going to be it for this video. Thank you for stopping by, for hanging out with me for a little bit. I know there were a couple weeks there with uh, no uploads because, you know, mom life, teacher life. That's just, that's just how it works sometimes. But I'm very excited to be back filming. I should have some more videos this week. So make sure you're subscribed before you go. That way I can see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.